Hello and welcome to Transformers Lore. Last time, we dealt with two individual stories on Megatron being set free, and the Autobots saving a rock concert from having their rocking tunes harnessed into energy by the Decepticon Empire. Most importantly, Megatron is free and the American government agency Triple I is working on to calming down the situation with the Transformers. For weeks, Megatron has been walking around the northeastern United States in search of fuel as he's running dry. He has arrived in eastern Wyoming where he has found the coal-rich basin of the Powder River. There, a human coal strip mine is conducting operations. He attacks the humans and tries to eat the coal, but he is not compatible with it. Just then, he freezes as he has run out of fuel. The Autobots have also been on patrol for the Decepticons, but they've established that for every 1,200 miles or 4 weeks, whichever comes first, they must be inspected by hoist. In the foothills of Oregon's Cascade Mountains, Walter Barnett comes to the secret Triple I facility, as Forrest Forsyth has called an executive board meeting. Triple I is supposed to do what the military failed to do, protect Earth from the robots. However, because Triple I is not equipped with weaponry, they have to use their wits. Forsyth displays examples of Transformers activity on Earth. Shockwave and Megatron fight in a small town at the base of Mount St. Hillary. Soundwave takes over Blackrock Aerospace Plant Number 1. Just days ago, 80,000 people saw Hoist. And earlier today, Megatron was captured in eastern Wyoming. Because of his experiences with the Transformers, G.B. Blackrock, the president of Blackrock Corporate Conglomerate, is being called into the meeting. However, Blackrock informs Triple I that there are good robots and evil robots, the Autobots and the Decepticons. Forsyth immediately sends Blackrock away, stating that Triple I should consider all robots a threat. Forsyth then dismisses the board and gives them 48 hours to formulate a plan. Walter Barnett comes home to his wife and son Stevie. He finds a comic that Stevie is reading, a Marvel comic called Robot Master. W wait, does Robot Master look a little familiar? Inspired by this, Barnett goes to New York City to speak with the writer. At New York City, Marvel employee Donnie Finkelberg is upset that Marvel is canceling his Robot Master book. Just then, Barnett arrives to see him. They meet, and Barnett reveals that he wants to use Robot Master to create a phony story. Donnie Finkelberg agrees to the new deal. Donnie will play as Robot Master and claim to be a terrorist who can control the robots that the public has been seeing recently. In return, Finkelberg is paid $50,000. 6pm the next day, Triple I hijacks TV signals, allowing Finkelberg to give his message as Robot Master, stating that he is the leader of the robots. The Autobots see this, and they don't know what to think. As for the humans, some think it's the work of the Communist, others think it's the work of the Palestine Liberation Organization, and GB Blackrock thinks that this is the work of the government. At 8.30 a.m. the next day, Blackrock leaves his home at Portland's west side, flanked by the press. Bumblebee picks him up, as Optimus Prime has sent Bumblebee to ask Blackrock if he knew anything about Robot Master. Blackrock informs Bumblebee that it's the work of the government, and this manages to leak out to the press, who begin to say that Robot Master is a fake. Enraged, Triple I decides to boost Robot Master's pay to $100,000 and begins to go to the site where Megatron's body is. The image of Megatron is also spread across the news, and various parties begin to head there. The Autobots under Prime roll out. Soundwave and his cassettes move from downtown Portland to find their Emperor. Just as Triple I arrives at the site, Blackrock arrives and demands Barnett consider what he's doing. The US military and the Autobots arrive at the same time, and the Autobots come down to speak to the humans. However, the US begins to open fire on the Autobots. Humans, we mean no harm! We come here to protect you! cries Optimus Prime, but the humans keep up their fire. Blackrock tells Triple I to stop and to note that the Autobots aren't fighting back. Just then, Soundwave arrives and quickly refuels Megatron. Megatron is now back in action. He begins to open fire on everyone. The Autobots retreat and the Decepticons grab Finkelberg, intending to make him pay for saying he was in charge of the superior Decepticons. However, Finkelberg makes a deal with them. People will understand if the robots were under control of terrorists because that's something they can understand. If they thought it was an actual alien robot, then humanity would freak out. As long as humanity thinks that Robot Master is in charge of the Decepticons, the Decepticons would be able to move freely without total destruction through things like nuclear weapons. The Decepticons reluctantly agreed to keep Robot Master in his position. After the battle, the Autobots are being repaired. Optimus says that the Decepticons will be more daring and the humans will be more hostile, so he suggests that the Autobots stay close to the Ark. Bumblebee is outside the Ark and sees Prime through a window. He immediately starts to think that the Autobots are talking about how useless he was in the last battle and he decides to just get out of their way, and he transforms and leaves, saying that they won't even notice he's gone. Shockwave still leads a faction of Decepticons at Blackrock's oil rig, and has a plan to use the Electro Calcinator module and implant it into Bumblebee's cerebral cortex, allowing him to take over Bumblebee, to destroy the Autobots. They pick Bumblebee because they believe he will be the easiest to take over. Laserbeak locates Bumblebee in a town, and Shockwave's Decepticons immediately deploy. Bumblebee is shot by the Decepticons and chased. His communicators were destroyed. 
He hides in a parking lot and shuts down, causing the Decepticons to not be able to find him. Later that night, two thugs, Waldo and Ernest, break into the parking lot and carjack Bumblebee, reactivating him. This causes the Decepticons to pick up his signal again and they begin to chase him. On the news, Optimus Prime sees that the Decepticons are attacking Bumblebee. The Autobots quickly deploy to search for him. During the chase, Bumblebee breaks down and the humans check up on what they believe is a normal car. They manage to fix up Bumblebee's damaged power lines, bringing him to full power. Just then, the Decepticons attack the humans, but Bumblebee takes control of his own vehicle mode and helps drive them to safety. The police begin to arrive on the chase, and nearby U.S. Air Force Base deploys F-16s to intercept the Decepticons. A dogfight ensues in the sky, and Shockwave notices both the police and the Autobots, and he orders a retreat. Waldo and Ernest are arrested, and Bumblebee learns that his place is with the Autobots.